You may have noticed that I've been looking back through the Just Have a Think archives recently to review progress on one or two of the key technologies we've featured on the channel in the past. One of those technologies is air conditioning. Hardly a cutting edge new concept, I grant you, but one that is enjoying an awful lot of focus right now as the day-to-day -day solution to a rapidly warming planet for hundreds of millions of people and as one of the major causes of that warming. It literally represents a lifesaver in many countries where ambient temperature and or humidity are now regularly reaching levels that represent a threat to human life. The basic principle of modern air conditioning hasn't really changed much since it was first invented well over 100 years ago. And despite some design tweaks along the way, these things still consume an awful lot of electrical energy, often in countries or regions where the electrical grids are powered by high carbon fossil fuels. There are now almost 2 billion domestic AC units in use all over the world, and that number is expected to triple again to almost 6 billion by 2050. And by the way, there's about another 1.6 billion units currently in use in industry, commerce and transport too. To be fair to the manufacturers, they are constantly looking for ways to refine their machinery and improve efficiency. But there's a limit to how far that can go within the existing technological framework. So how about looking at a new framework altogether then? Hello and welcome to Just Have a Think. We've looked at the global implications of space cooling in a couple of previous videos which I've linked in the description section below. In very basic terms, warm ambient air from your room flows into the unit on the wall where it passes over copper pipes containing a refrigerant gas. Heat energy passes from the air into the refrigerant gas and the now much cooler air is sent back out into the room. The refrigerant gas passes through a compressor and into a condenser outside, which is basically a fan-assisted heat exchanger that allows the heat in the gas to escape out to fresh air. As the gas loses its heat energy, it condenses and changes state into a liquid. The liquid refrigerant then flows through an expansion valve, which is specifically designed to reduce its pressure and turn it back into a very cold gas, ready to be sent back into the internal evaporator once again. As your room's ambient air cools inside the evaporator unit, moisture condenses out onto the surface of the pipes, which is why there has to be a collection tray or an outlet route for the condensate liquid. So AC cooling systems essentially perform two tasks at the same time. They cool the air and they dry the air. But persuading that water vapor to change phase from a gas to a liquid and condense out as water droplets takes energy. Energy that could otherwise be focused on keeping the room cool, which after all is the main objective. According to this recent article, an air conditioner operating in a tropical climate can use as much as 60% of its cooling power to dehumidify the air. So if you could get the moisture out of the air some other way, then maybe you could save some energy in the overall system. And that's where this stuff comes into the picture. You've probably thrown hundreds of these things away in your time, along with the rest of the packaging from delicate products that would otherwise get damaged by moisture during shipping. They're called desiccants, and in a packaging application, the substance used is typically silica gel. On a grander scale, desiccants like this could theoretically be used to absorb moisture from ambient internal air for space cooling. That's not actually a new idea either, to be completely honest. The first commercial desiccant air conditioning system was actually developed by the Catherbar company way back in 1910, and it proved to be reasonably useful in commercial applications until the more effective vapor compression system achieved market dominance in the 1930s. Fast forward to today, and the combination of a global energy crisis and a global climate crisis is refocusing engineering minds on how to minimize energy consumption in space cooling systems. One possible solution is to combine a vapor compression system with a desiccant system, which is precisely what a Massachusetts startup called Transera are developing. They're working with a class of materials called Metal Organic Frameworks, or MOFs. These are sponge-like, highly porous materials that have an extremely large surface area per gram and which are showing promise in a variety of new commercial applications. When water vapour enters the pores of the MOF, it does get denser, but crucially, because of the very narrow pore walls, it's not able to transform from a gas into a liquid. That means you've captured moisture without expending all that extra energy on a phase change. It also means less energy is needed to expel that captured moisture and dry the material than would otherwise be required to dry out an existing commercial desiccant material 
like silica gel. And because an air conditioning system is designed specifically to shove unwanted heat out to the atmosphere, Transera's design can utilize that heat to dry and regenerate the MOF material, ready to mop up more water on the next cycle. The net effect, according to Transera, is a 35% increase in overall energy efficiency, which means the whole system can be produced at a lower cost. In late 2020, the company emerged from stealth mode to announce $4.5 million of seed funding from investors including Carrier Ventures, who are the investment arm of the mighty Carrier Global HVAC Group. They've also partnered up with the Chinese home appliances manufacturing giant Haya to carry out some prototype testing at a production facility in India. Transera aren't alone in their quest for greater HVAC efficiency though. Another relatively recent startup is Blue Frontier, based in Florida. They're initially aiming to provide a solution for non-domestic commercial operations using a liquid desiccant design that they say can completely replace an existing vapor compression system. Sounds a bit like the old Catherbar company I mentioned earlier, doesn't it? So what's their USP then? Well, instead of a silica gel, the Blue Frontier system uses an extremely concentrated salt solution to pull moisture from the air. They combine that innovation with an indirect evaporative cooling process. Many of you will no doubt already be familiar with the concept of evaporative cooling. The basic principle is to pass air across a receptacle containing water. The air picks up moisture from the water and as it flows out into your warm room, the moisture evaporates. The energy for that evaporation comes from the warm ambient air in the room and as a result, that ambient air gets cooler. The only wrinkle is that the longer you use an evaporative cooler, the more humid your room gets. And that can get uncomfortable after a while. And if you already live in a very humid part of the world, then the evaporation process doesn't really work. So you don't get any appreciative cooling benefit. The solution to that conundrum is an indirect evaporation process like the one employed by Blue Frontier. Their system schematic looks like this. And just to be contrary, we're gonna start at the back end of the process over here. The supply air fan blows air into the Blue Frontier cooling core, where it first passes over a layer of the concentrated salt solution or liquid desiccant. So now we've got a very dry air stream and a slightly less concentrated desiccant, which we'll come back to in a moment. The dry air then gets separated out into two new streams. One stream gets sent over a thin layer of water and reabsorbs a load of moisture, again through evaporation, which uses up energy and lowers the temperature of the air. The now cool and humid airstream flows across the underside of a metal surface which cools it down and pulls heat out of the other dry airstream which is flowing across the top side. The humid air gets exhausted out and the cool dry air is supplied to the room. There's enough concentrated salt in the storage tank to provide between four and seven hours of climate control. At the end of that time, the now moisture laden dilute desiccant gets re-dried by a heat pump in this regenerator heater matrix that can be programmed to run overnight when the unit cost of electricity is at its lowest. Blue Frontier claims this system achieves a 60% reduction in energy use, as much as a 90% reduction in peak electrical demand because of that overnight regeneration, with a resultant reduction of as much as 80% in overall annual running costs compared to a standard vapor compression system. It also doesn't use any of those horrible refrigerant greenhouse gases that standard AC systems use, which means there's an 85% reduction in global warming potential, or GWP. That whole setup could potentially be improved still further using membrane technology to filter the water out of the desiccant solution instead of using a heat pump. That's an innovation being developed by a Boston-based company called Zephyr. Still relatively early days for them, but they're hoping to have a full lab scale prototype of their cooling system up and running by the end of 2023. Both Blue Frontier and Zephyr are initially aiming at systems for larger commercial buildings. So if they were to demonstrate enough common sense to talk to each other, then we could be onto a real winner, folks. And both companies say their technology could eventually be adapted for domestic homes and apartments, which really would be a game changer. Most people now understand the magnitude of our global decarbonisation challenge. Not every energy saving or low carbon technology will be a glamorous headline grabber. Many of them will just quietly work away somewhere in the back of a machine or buried within a smart system somewhere, producing efficiencies that folks like you and me will most likely simply take for granted 
as we go about our busy everyday lives. But it's technological advances like the ones we've looked at today that'll go a long way to enabling the crucial transition away from fossil fuels that is the only way we can ensure a safe future for our descendants. Now, you may have your own opinion on that little piece of rhetoric. And of course, if you do, or if you've got some nuggets of insider information about any of the technologies we've looked at today, then as always, the place to leave your thoughts is in the comments section below. That's it for this week though. Thanks as always to our Patreon supporters who help me keep the channel completely independent and keep ads and sponsorship messages out of all the videos. If you'd like to get involved with all that, then you'll receive a very warm welcome over at patreon.com forward slash just have a think where you can find out about all the exclusive stuff on offer. And you can hugely support me right here on YouTube absolutely for free by subscribing and very importantly by hitting that like button which is what gets these videos shown to more viewers. Dead easy to do that, you just need to click down there or on that icon there. As always, thanks very much for watching. Have a great week and remember to just have a think. See you next week.